A very happy new year and welcome to Auto Mundial, the weekly car news and reviews show where this time we're kicking off the year with Porsche's fabulous new Cayman GT4 RS. We also have BMW's new 2 Series Coupe and an EV from Volvo. Plus, the Lexus ES takes on the Jaguar XF and we take a look at the facelifted 2022 Ford Focus. That's all coming up, but first, the news. Nissan has unveiled four new concept cars to preview its new electric technologies. The lineup consists of a coupe SUV called the Chill Out, a sports car called the Max Out, a pickup called the Surf Out, and an MPV called the Hangout. While we're unlikely to see many of these new concepts on production lines anytime soon, we will see some of the tech. The quartet of concepts is each powered by Nissan's new E-Force powertrain that will power the new Araya when it goes on sale in the coming months. The closest to production is the Chill Out, a version of which will eventually replace the Leaf in a few years' time at Nissan's Sunderland EV hub. It's fair to say that we haven't been too kind about BMWs of late. The huge grills and front-wheel drive layouts on the 1 and 2 series left us feeling a little worried about the brand's future. The old 2 series lineup was pretty simple, but the new model has spawned a variety of different body styles from four-door coupes to MPVs. Now though, it seems that BMW is heading back to its bread and butter with this, the all-new 2 series coupe. A two-door coupe with a big engine at the front, sending drive to the rear wheels. Lovely. To achieve this layout, the new 2 Series is based on the 3 Series platform, meaning it gets a great selection of engines. The entry-level 220i gets a four-cylinder petrol engine producing a modest 182 brake horsepower and can achieve 62 miles per hour from rest in seven and a half seconds. Next up is a diesel, which with 190 horsepower on tap is actually slightly quicker than the petrol car. The flagship though, until the new M2 comes along, is the M240i xDrive. BMW nerds will know that the xDrive badge means power is sent to all four wheels rather than just the back ones, but BMW has engineered it to be rear biased, sending up to 100% of the power to the back. Under the bonnet is a BMW staple. A 3-litre straight-six with a brace of turbochargers, producing 375 bhp. This is the enthusiast's choice then, hitting 62 from a standstill in just 4.4 seconds, onto a limited top speed of 155. Things are looking good so far then, and we haven't even got to the styling. Okay, it's not the prettiest Beamer ever made, but it's certainly one of the best in the brand's current lineup. A clear evolution of the old car, it gets a big long bonnet up front, with some relatively tame kidney grills below it. The rear haunches house some meaty wheels and tyres, while the short rear end showcases those gorgeous new rear lights and big exhaust tips. To help it drive as well as it looks, the 2 Series Coupe gets 50-50 weight distribution and a low centre of gravity. Its wide track and short wheelbase mean it's agile, while the straight six soundtrack will keep you grinning every time you drive it. But if you're after a stylish compact coupe, for the last two decades there's been one obvious choice, the Audi TT. Available with a range of engines and power outputs, the current model is every bit the all-rounder. Built on VW's MQB platform, it's available with two or all-wheel drive, but don't expect it to be quite as involving as the rear-driven BMW. The interior, though, is a real treat. It's clean, modern and simple, with no big screen dominating the dashboard. Instead, 
you get Audi's excellent virtual cockpit, which displays all the information you might need, including the sat-nav. The TT, though, feels somewhat dated next to the 2 Series. It's a real return to form for BMW, and we can't wait to see what the M Division can do with it. When choosing a new executive saloon, it can be all too easy to head straight down to your local Audi, BMW or Mercedes dealer and pick one of their very impressive, if slightly obvious, big imposing cars. However, might you be better off looking at options outside of Germany's big three? This is the newly revised Lexus ES, Japan's answer to the E-Class and 5 Series. Fresh from a midlife overhaul, the somewhat left-field choice doesn't look all that different than before, with just a new grille and narrower headlights marking it out. There are some new alloy wheel options too, but otherwise the ES is unchanged aesthetically. Instead, the engineers concentrated on the chassis to make the new 2022 ES more comfortable and better to drive. It gets some updated suspension, which Lexus says has made the car more predictable, especially at high speed. The ES was always a relaxing car to drive, but Lexus has tried to refine it even further with incredible attention to detail. For example, the electronic braking system has been recalibrated and the brake pedal itself is now slightly bigger with more bracing around its mount to reduce vibrations to your foot. The door mirrors on top spec Takumi cars have been replaced with cameras as we've already seen on numerous EVs. Sadly, the integration here isn't the slickest, with the pictures being fed to a pair of rather incongruous screens mounted on the A-pillars. Thankfully, the other tech updates are a little less dissonant. There's a smart new 12.3-inch infotainment system, standard across the range, with built-in navigation and smartphone integration. High-spec cars also get new LED headlights with blade scan adaptive high beam technology. This uses fast rotating mirrors to focus the light beams and increase your field of vision when your lights are dipped. And the smorgasbord of new tech does not end there. The safety systems have been updated, allowing the car to spot more potential hazards and remain more stable during evasive maneuvers. Under the bonnet, the ES retains its sole powertrain option, two-and-a-half-litre four-cylinder petrol motor hooked up to an electric motor and battery pack for a combined 215 brake horsepower. Sadly then, it lacks the broad range of engine choices you get in its German rivals, and it's also somewhat lacking in performance. 0-62 takes a casual 8.9 seconds onto a very modest top speed of 112 miles per hour. It is economical though, returning up to 54 miles per gallon. However, those looking for a non-German exec saloon aren't limited to the Lexus. This is the Jaguar XF, possibly the best looking car in this class. Available with a selection of petrol and diesel motors, and as a saloon or an estate, the XF is more in line with BMW and Mercedes. It also gets a beautiful cabin with JLR's excellent PIVI Pro infotainment system. The Lexus then will continue to be rather a niche option. The Jaguar and the Germans will make more sense to most buyers, but as it always has done, it will no doubt continue to appeal to those in the know. After the break, Volvo versus Audi and the new Porsche GT4 RS.
Coming up, Porsche's new RS Cayman. But first. When the current Ford Focus was launched in 2018, we were impressed not only with the way it drove, but also with its styling. Until that point, the Focus had always looked a little conservative when compared to rivals like the Seat Leon and the Renault Megane. However, since 2018, a flurry of new rivals have come out, so Ford has given the Focus a well-deserved facelift. The front end has been totally redesigned with a new look in line with that of the new Fiesta. Like a lot of new cars that we've seen in the last couple of years, it gets a big new grille housing the blue oval badge. The nose of the car is higher, while the new LED headlights are slimmer and more aggressive. Changes at the rear are much less obvious with the optional LED rear lights gaining a darker tint. ST line models get an updated body kit, as does the proper ST itself. The Focus range has been simplified, losing the Vignali trim. Instead, buyers can now specify a Vignali pack on titanium, active and ST line cars, which adds a selection of extra kit. The interior remains as it was, but buyers now have the option of Ford's SYNC 4 infotainment system with a new 13.2-inch touchscreen. The climate controls are now operated via the screen, removing the buttons for a less cluttered dash. The sporty ST hot hatch, meanwhile, gets a new satin finish on its vents, a lurid new paint option called Mean Green, and some new alloy wheel options in either 18 or 19 inches. Inside, the Recaro seats have been ditched in favour of some of Ford's own sports seats, while the starting price has crept up by nearly three grand to a little under £34,000. Last year, Volvo proudly announced that by 2030, all of its models would be electric. It also said that it was targeting 50% EV sales by 2025. An ambitious target as, at the time, Volvo didn't even have an electric car in its lineup. Pole stars aside then, Volvo has finally put its money where its mouth is and brought us this. Its first standalone EV, the C40 Recharge. We like the electric version of the XC40, and the new coupe SUV C40 carries much of the same hardware. Interestingly, Volvo says the C40 Recharge is only available to buy online. You can still pop to your local dealer for a test drive, but the actual purchasing of your new car will be a bit different from the time you bought your old V70. Buyers can either pay the full cash price or lease it with a new Care by Volvo scheme, which covers your monthly fee, any maintenance cost and even your insurance. A new way of car buying then, but what's the C40 actually like? Well, like the purchasing process, the lineup is very simple. There's one powertrain and only one trim level. An electric motor on each axle provides an ample 402 brake horsepower, enough to get the stylish Tesla rival from 0 to 62 in under 5 seconds. The range is decent too, 273 miles, which is about right in this class. We'll leave you to make up your own minds about the styling. We don't dislike it, we just happen to prefer the more practical XC40. Inside, you're treated to a veritable feast of the zeitgeist's buzzwords. There are some 3D printed dashboard panels, vegan upholstery, and an Android infotainment system that incorporates Google Maps. Unfortunately, it doesn't support Apple CarPlay, disappointing in a car that costs more than £57,000. Overall though, this is an impressive car, and certainly something a bit different from Volvo's usual fare. However, in this increasingly popular corner of the market, the Volvo has got some competition. This is the Audi Q4 e-tron, and to the untrained eye, it isn't obviously an electric car. It all looks fairly conventional, 
and there's even what appears to be a big grill at the front. In true Audi fashion, it gets some very swanky LED lights, including a full-width light bar at the rear. 19-inch alloys come as standard with optional 20s and 21s, which make it look a bit meaner. It's a chunky-looking car with a low roofline, but for style-conscious buyers, there's also a coupe version called the Q4 Sportback. This sacrifices some practicality in the name of looking good, with tapered roof lines creating a rakish, sporty silhouette. Inside, the Q4 gets a modern driver-centric layout, with the big infotainment screen and controls angled towards the driving seat. The drive selector sits on a floating panel, giving you some extra space below it. There are three different powertrain options to choose from. The entry-level 35 model gets a 52 kilowatt hour battery, 168 bhp and a 208 mile range. Next up is the 40. It costs a few grand more but gets a bigger 77 kilowatt hour battery, 201 brake horsepower and a much improved range of 316 miles. This middle-of-the-range model is the one to go for if you want maximum mileage from your Q4. If you're more interested in performance though, the top spec 50 uses the same battery but power is increased to 296 bhp. The range drops to just below 300 miles but it will hit 62 miles per hour from rest in 6.2 seconds. Now that isn't exactly rapid in the world of EVs but it's quick enough in a family SUV. The Audi offers more choice than the Volvo then, as well as a better range in the top spec cars. Crucially though, the Q4 is cheaper, but if Volvo's first pure EV is anything to go by, we can expect an interesting electric lineup by 2030. For years, it has always felt as if Porsche was holding back with the Cayman. It's always been a great driver's car, but we assumed that Porsche didn't want its junior sports car treading on the 911's toes with a car from the GT department. But then it brought along the excellent Cayman GT4. With a 911 derived engine and some trick chassis upgrades courtesy of the GT department, we thought this was as far as Porsche would ever take the Cayman, but it turns out we were wrong. This is the new Porsche 718 Cayman GT4 RS, the most hardcore Cayman Porsche has ever built. It gets the same 4-litre flat 6 as the 911 GT3, detuned to produce 483 brake horsepower and 332 pounds-feet of torque. Air is drawn in via two side intakes placed where you'd normally find the rear quarter windows. It'll rev all the way up to 9,000 RPM, getting the lightweight RS from 0 to 62 in 3.4 seconds, half a second quicker than the regular GT4. The top speed is almost 200 miles per hour, making this the fastest road-going mid-engined Porsche since the Carrera GT. Keeping the RS on the road is a new aero kit with an enormous rear wing with GT3 style swan neck mounts. In addition, the front wings have been widened as have the front bumper and adjustable front diffuser for up to 60% more downforce than a regular GT4. There's even hidden aerodynamics underneath the car to further boost downforce. Of course, this being an RS car, it's been lightened. It's 35 kilograms lighter than a standard PDK GT4 and 20 kilograms lighter than a GT3. The front wings and bonnets are made from carbon fiber reinforced plastic and even the badges have been swapped out for stickers. Naturally, the chassis has also received some tweaks. 
it sits lower than the standard car on RS-specific adjustable suspension with modified spring rates and new anti-roll bars. Inside, the RS does without many of the luxuries you get in standard Caymans. Instead, most surfaces are covered with Porsche's race text material, while a half cage sits behind a pair of beautiful bucket seats. Sadly, however, the deceptive shifter is not in fact a gear stick, with paddle shift PDK being the only choice of transmission. Prices will start at just over £108,000, a lot for a Cayman, sure, but don't think of this as a pricey 718. Think of it as an entry-level RS. Join us again next week on Auto Mundial as we check out BMW's latest concept car, the XM.